Um, I'm Ellen Bork. I'm the director of democracy and human rights at the Foreign Policy Initiative. This is my friend Win Min, a former uh, student activist, expert, uh, academic, analyst, and uh, journalist on, on Burma, who's kindly agreed to uh, talk a little bit about the film. There's an enormous amount uh, in there, and as you all know, the story that's being told on this film hasn't even uh, finished yet. Uh, just in the last few days, Aung San Suu Kyi left Burma for the first time, I think, in 24 years. Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, she's, uh, women will talk a little bit about the, the, the sensation she's really causing in, in Thailand and her, perhaps in her onward uh, stops uh, to collect her Nobel and, and other things. Um, I just wanted to, to get right into it with Win Min and ask, um, did you recognize her in this film? Is this, is this an accurate portrayal? What, what about it struck you as a film about this unbelievable historic character? Well, as I like to means, um, it's a huge sacrifice in our life. I mean, not just me, but many of those people. Whenever like, we think about how we talk about her, I mean, we also just cover her news today in Thailand. It's um, incredible that, um, I mean, not just in the film that you see the sacrifice, but also in the what was what she was doing just yesterday and today. I mean, in Thailand, was another sacrifice. I mean, another attempt to promote and protect the rights of the millions of Burmese migrant workers in Thailand. I mean, it's like Mexican president, you know, coming to the United States and seeing all the, you know, illegal marijuana workers here. That in Thailand, you know, we have more than two million Burmese migrant workers, and only a few of them are registered, and many are illegal. So what what she did, her first meeting, was now with the king. You know, Prime Minister, or, um, yeah, former Prime Minister, but it was with migrant workers. And uh, we interviewed, you know, um, a lot of migrant workers who went to that event. And, I mean, they were afraid. I mean, they didn't think they could die. They feel that someone is really taking care of them. Shoot. After all the sacrifices she made, she's still continuing to liberate all the oppressed people. It's amazing to me. Um, yes. Well, it's, it's, it, 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 the point you make is very interesting because, of course, she's, she's not, she should be the leader, the, the, the leader of the country. She had an extraordinary mandate uh, given to her party mm -hmm. in those elections that were ignored uh, decades ago. Now she's won a place uh, in Parliament, and yet mm -hmm. she sort of has the she has the legitimacy and the moral stature that no one else in that country has. Um, is she as is, is she going to be able to in in with, Does that mean that despite having this one elected seat? Uh, and the limited number of seats that her party gained in the last elections, mm -hmm. what, what's going to happen? How is she, is she going to be able to translate or maintain that legitimacy and that power? Or is she now going to face what many politicians face in situations like that? Um, what, how do you see her carrying her role forward? Mm -hmm. I mean, as I said, there are so much expectation from the people on her. It's huge. So her challenge will be to meet that expectation. I just interviewed uh, past secretary two weeks ago. And then there were like workers' demonstrations in Burma. And I asked him, you know, what, what do you think? And then he said, well, many people are writing letters to the MLP. And also talking to him, whenever he went. And especially like in the rural areas, people thought that was already in a government. She was already in a government. That's when she could 
could make a change uh, very quickly. So you can see that that you know real expedition, the real hope for the people of Burma. Uh, that's 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 the main reason that in the movie you can see that she even do not see her husband. Uh, for the people. So she knows the expedition. And um, I think it will be very difficult, and it will be a huge challenge for her being an editor, you know, parliamentarian. Uh, I mean, to meet all the expectations, especially to bring the changes to the you know, social economic life of people of Burma. So she said that actually, you know, in a trip. Um, I mean, she met workers not just one time. She was in Thailand for two days, yesterday and the day before yesterday. I mean, it was today. I mean. Uh, um, uh, because of the time difference, right? I mean, she met them two times. I mean, she had to travel a long way to reach there, like three or four hours from the center of Bangkok. And she has a motion sickness. She even did not care about it. Anyway, so then what she said was the reality that, you know, she's going to face. She said, I don't want to overpromise you. I don't want to give you I mean, promise that I, that I can't do. But what I, what I can... I uh, promise you is that um, I'll try to promote your rights. I'll try to improve your living situation and working situation in Thailand by talking to the Thai authorities. She just did it today. She, she, she met the Deputy Foreign Minister, uh, sorry, the Deputy um, Prime Minister of Thailand, the second highest person in Thailand and talked about um, your worker rights. And the first time that a Burmese leader raised that, I mean, uh, our international, I mean, media coverage about uh, Burmese workers. So, and, um, I mean, there's likely to be um, that uh, Thailand government is gonna try to treat Burmese workers better than for, because she's there. So who can refuse that request? <laughs> I mean, if she, if she comes to the United States and asks the President Obama to do this or that, she can, I mean, it might be difficult for him to refuse. Same thing. I think there, there is going to be some changes in Thailand. But anyway, I mean, workers are so excited when we interview them today. It was triggered that their life is going to be changed, but you know, still the reality is that it will come overnight. It will take time, but it's going to be a step. So, how can she manage the huge expedition um, in a way that there will be like gradual progress? I think it's a yeah. real, real challenge for her. Yeah, let me let me just change uh, the focus just a little bit. Um, you know, I asked if you saw her in this film and, you know, the, the performance by uh, Michelle Yeoh. Some of the depictions of the generals, mm -hmm. are, you know, they were faced with this sort of extreme brutality mm -hmm. and also a kind of, you know, a superstition, um, lack of education. Of it. What, what uh, you, you know, you lived through much of this. I know you left at a certain point. Right. Uh, was that a fair depiction? Is that, that kind of the, the reliance on, on astrology, the... Um, the, their perceptions, their you know, the, the attempt to denigrate her as having foreign connections to her husband. Is that the mentality that you observed? And is that how, if, if that is the case, how, how, what kind of future does Burma have considering the, the, the dominance of those people still in, in many positions of power? I, mean, I can see um, two, two part of the uh, General Niwe at the time, you know, who was the movie. That's a, the, the, the big figure at the beginning who steps yeah. aside and then wears a coat and tie at a certain point. Um, the, the steps behind the junta, ultimately. That's the one right. who resigns and. Oh, no, no, not, not the one who resigned. Okay. Who was dismissed, right? right. Not the one. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, the one who was a toppy at the time, who mm -hmm. went to uh, astrologist. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Niwe Turner, he passed away already uh, in his um, early 90s. Jackie Dallas lived very long. Like in the Mugabe year, um, you know he, he he 
was not a university student uh, in first term in high school. It was in a time of you know, war and drama, so he cannot continue his uh, university. But you know, he, he read you know, English newspapers. Yeah. Um, so he, his education was not that really low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he was very superstitious. Yeah. I mean, not like in the movie. Not, not like in the movie that he went to that market you know, to see the astrologer. Um, you know, she, he had them come to his house. Um, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's really the, 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 you know, um, yeah, she will be very, you know, treated uh, very well. But true thing is that he was really, I mean, most of the meetings, um, I mean, he did not take the advice uh, from his, uh, I mean, ministers, but from the astrologer. So one of the top leaders I met before talked to me about this. And the one who was set aside, um, according to the movie, it was a generous saint who was uh, known in Bamba as a Pacha. So he killed a lot of students in, you know, throughout the history. I mean, especially at 19, in 1962, when the military you know, started ruling in Burma. So at that time, um, what he did was he demolished the student union, regular student union. You know, it is historic union, historic union in Burma, where General Aung San, father of Aung San Suu Kyi, walked as a student leader. So we are so much pride in that, that you know, these you know, union produced country leaders, all the first leaders of Burma, not just uh, Aung San, former prime minister during that latter time, and deputy, and you know, all these top leaders at the time, sorry, they were student leaders. What he did was, he demolished that. who were demonstrating against military rule. They were the first there. So um, this uh, General Salem, he was not educated at all. So he would do whatever he was ordered to do. So at their education level, you know, at their point was very low. Um, but it doesn't mean that you know, all the top leaders <coughs> were uneducated. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they, 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 they know, um, especially General he, he knew most of the <coughs> what happened. But the main thing was power. He just had a very bad goal. Uh, he did not even, you know, wanted to uh, want to leave the country when, you know, it was a huge demonstration in Burma in 1988. But, you know, he was determined to crush. So it was a military coup, you know, in 1988. You know, it did not show here actually. Thousands of students were killed. You know, what is was this movie? All these memories came back actually. In 1988. Can you, you know, um, estimate how many students were killed in Burma? I mean, in the press, we talked about around 3,000 students. But according to the intelligence report, it was almost 10,000. There were a lot of disappearance. But, you know, that intelligence officer told me they will never release the information. Anyway, so it was really, I mean, massive Two of my friends were killed, my close friends. Yeah, they were shot on the street. They both died on, you know, on the spot. So I was lucky, actually. I fled to the border after 1988 that I could escape, you know, arrest him. Uh, yeah. So it was a discriminate, you know, shooting. Um, not like in 2007, you know, where we saw, you know, the shooting pattern was totally different. In 2007, because of media and all these like, people watching, so numbers of people killed were you know, less than 100. And I could see that, you know, if you see the sense, it was like shooting above the head. Right? And they were like shooting like, you know, like sniper, shooting like people with camera. And, but in 1980, it was discriminated. You can see people just walking. It was like that in 1980. And no media report. I mean, there was a media report, but not much report about that. Even though, you know, you could see the Tiananmen Square, you know, a movement in China. It was you know, known to everybody, but the number of kills were not that huge like in Burma. You know, you still see the tank, you know, moving. Yeah, there. So, I mean, it's, it's um, not part of that they were not educated, but it's power. Yeah, in way, in the way that they crack down and you know suppress the movement. But when you know education um, counts is you know to build up the country, they did not have the capacity. Um, they, but they did not want to admit it. And all these reports, you know, reaching to them were lies. Yeah. So they
they are living in a dream. And you know, the former leader, General Dan Shui, who just retired uh, in 2011, he was also living in a dream. Nobody dared to talk to him about what was wrong or bad or people are suffering. You know, one of the examples was in 2008, uh, when we had a Nagas cyclone in Burma. You, know, you will remember there was a huge cyclone in Burma. Um, and um, a lot of people were killed. More than 200,000 people were killed. Yeah. Even then, there were generals you know, who were not dared to talk to him, the exact numbers. They were studying with the 900. And at one point, he even did not allow the you know, soldiers and troops to go down and help. So one of the top generals at the time even leaked the information and asked the United Nations Secretary General to come and talk to him the real thing. It was the situation. <coughs> so they did not listen. The main problem is, I mean, not having that I mean, capacity to listen, it reached to the level of like, education that, you know, to see the complexity, and they just wanted to, I mean, enjoy their life, you know, and they don't really want to solve the problems. Sometimes they, whenever people come and see the problems, they say, oh, it's enough, a lot of bad news already, so I don't want to see bad news. So they say things like that. And then, you know, people, you know, below them, they do not really report. I mean, that's the main problem. What is different today, I mean, um, now I can talk to you more, but in terms of education, um, not that they are, I mean, that's, that's not the main thing that, you know, bring the country um, and so regressive and bring the country into one of the poorest countries if they listen to the people. I mean, you don't really need to know politics very well. If you have a president, you know, Reagan, right? I mean, he was not really educated or you know, highly educated, but he had a good advisors to listen to. And he was the best, you know, one of the best presidents in the United States. But we do not even have that capacity to listen. That's the problem. Um, I'd love to entertain questions from the audience for one minute, if, if anybody would like to. Um, <coughs> lady in the back, please. Um, we've talked a lot about Aung um, San Suu Kyi. Oh, we That's okay. Oh, and right. please give your name and, and ask uh, a question. Hi, that goes to the ground rules. Um, you've talked a lot about, um, we've talked a lot about Aung um, San Suu Kyi today, and I'd like to talk a little bit about the regime as well, and obviously right now I think the decision-making process that led to their, their recent decisions in opening up Burma, at least a little bit, um, it, it are relatively opaque. But now that Aung San Suu Kyi is traveling around and she's speaking to Burmese people in Thailand and elsewhere, and she's getting a lot of news coverage, I'm wondering what your interpretation is of how the regime, or why the regime is even allowing her to, have, to be such a public figure. And I know she's tempered a lot of her statements but it's, it's interesting to me, and I'm wondering if you have any insight on that. Um, yeah, that's the you know, biggest question that we are facing today. Um, I mean, there are I mean, a few things, not just in you know, one thing. Uh, but one of the main points is that um, the new president who came into power, um, uh, President Deng Seng, I mean, his personality, personality and his rule count so much in a way that um, I mean, meeting Aung San Suu Kyi at his uh, presidential you know, residence rather than staying at the office. And, um, you know, uh, if, if he you know, uh, saw her, met her uh, at the office, he has to have all the protocols and other like, leaders. He could not talk, you know, I mean, frankly, uh, deeply with her. So that meeting was very important. Um, so what happened there? It, it's off the record, on the record. I hadn't really thought about that. Um, uh, I think you have to assume that it's, it's on the record. On the record, okay. <laughs> um, so what I heard, according what to... What were you going to say, anyway? <laughs> 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 uh, what I heard, um, I, I don't use the service. Yeah. So I met you know, one of the top leaders in the NLT, and I asked about that meeting. So what happened was that um, our sensitivity changed totally after the meeting. And they had a lot of discussion on you know, what they're going to do for the future from our society side and from they promised each other. And on the you know, way um, to um, do to the door, also General Deng Seng's you know, wife talked to our society because it was a private you know, dinner. So President White was there too. And she said, well, we, we, we have support of you. 
we could not talk about that in the past. And now my, my husband is trying to move things along. So hope to you know, work with you for the future. I mean, it was really, I mean, for Aung San Suu Kyi, that part was also very important, that she can trust the president. And there were a lot of things they discussed, that, you know, like they were hardliners in the government and not softliners, and so he has to move slowly. But at least she... She feels she, she has an ally on, in the time. And trust yeah. uh, in him that she never had before. We had a lot of, you know, dialogue before in the past. And uh, mm -hmm. she did not say publicly that I had to trust in this general as a moderate and reform minded. She talked about that in the press. In the, in the press. Yeah. So it was a it was a big change. So one thing he realized, he realized according to that NLD leader, uh, was that um, he wanted to bring you know change and improvement to Burma when he realized that Burma left so much behind other countries, especially within you know, all the ASEAN countries, that he traveled as a former prime minister of Burma. So the current president was a former you know, prime minister. Um, and um, he even talked about you know, how Burma was left behind Laos and Cambodia on his way you know, back to Burma on a plane. One of my friends was you know, on a plane at the time with him. Um, and, uh, uh, but he, he, he didn't talk about that when he went back to Burma. It was uh, four years ago. He went to uh, Cambodia uh, when Cambodia hosted uh, ASEAN. So he's now you know, realizing that his country lacked so much behind. That the former president did not really understand because of the wrong reporting. And uh, plus, at the time, you know, um, president, uh, you know, former president uh, was there, former dictator General Tan Shui. He did not understand that to improve Burma, he needed to get uh, international support. To get the international support, you know, that means to get rid of all these sanctions. You need to talk to Aung San Suu Kyi. You need to talk to talk one with Aung San Suu Kyi. She did not understand that. But the president seems to understand that he had to work with her. He needed her on that to, you know, to get rid of the sanctions. But the main thing is still um, to catch up with other countries. Um, economic development. He knew that um, you know, this, is, um, this should be his legacy. It seems like it seems to me that uh, it's a huge difference. Yeah. So Aung San Suu Kyi was already ready, um, yeah, to work with you know mm -hmm. people like him. And before there were a lot of people say Aung San Suu Kyi was very stubborn, she did not negotiate all these things, right? Actually, is they are not really true. Yeah. And yeah, I can talk about that. So I met a uh, former um, negotiator for Aung San Suu Kyi, uh, Russell Isno. Um, he was a former UN. Um, uh, special representative farmer, and who was the one negotiator for her release in 2001. Um, and he said, well, you know, she wrote a lot of letters to former general Tan Shui, where she can compromise. Even she said she wanted to attend the national convention, yeah, uh, if you are really willing to, you know, walk, um, yeah, with her. But General Tan Shui did not reply that letter at all. Yeah. So when I met him, he said, well, you know, in the press, you will see that. But in reality, he said that he was a you know, um, negotiator. So he said, I can't talk. But I just want to let you know. So I was lucky that I never you know, talked in the press about you know, when people started saying, oh, she was the bomb, or she didn't have support. Or, I mean, she was flexible. You know, but the, oh, the problem was, the other side wasn't that. You know, it was, if you look at you know, South Africa, it was like, um, former dictator of South Africa, uh, Botha, and the President Botha, right? Uh, and uh, I mean, like, the later one, um, President uh, Diklak. So it, it was like that to me. And um, yeah, um, so that uh, that personality, the two figures of San Suu Kyi and the President will be the most you know, important person for Obama in the future. And um, I mean, we, we still need to wait you know, for uh, you know, for the future, but a lot depends on these, you know, personality and problems. Thanks. Let's take two or three questions uh, together. Um, you, you two gentlemen and someone over here, was there one? And if you just quick identify yourself and say, Christy, can you bring the mic over? We'll pick up a few questions up for the, to wrap up. Hi, Mr. Mayor. My name is Park. Okay. I was curious to 
something else, and how do you feel about that? I, I, I think the uh, U.S. Uh, move is uh, very strategic. Um, it's uh, because of U.S. Uh, new strategy of uh, U.S. pivot to uh, Asia Pacific, um, where U.S. is trying to manage the, you know, uh, manage uh, growing China. So it is real, you know, um, strategic move. But without um, agreement from ourselves, Suji, I don't think President um, Obama uh, would send uh, Hillary Clinton to make this you know, new chapter. It was only when you know, President uh, Obama talked to her from his flight to um, Indonesia um, at that time ASEAN summit that uh, she agreed that there are improvements. That, that made the U.S., you know, um, yeah. Are we, go, are we going too far too fast? Is the, I don't think so. You don't I, mean, think you, so? Uh, I mean, the U.S. is uh, managing very well um, in a way, I mean, to encourage the reform, reformist in the government, and but also uh, managing the you know, pressure in the United States in the Senate, um, but also, I mean, uh, supporting our sensitivity without GS from her, U.S. is not going to do anything. And all our senators, you know, uh, Mitch McConnell, McCain, you know, they were very excited after seeing her, after hearing from her that you know things are changing. Otherwise, it won't happen. That uh, and also the U.S. and you know, especially Ambassador to Burma, uh, I met him. Um, so I mean, he has been very good. And, and, um, I mean, he has been managing very well. Yeah, that um, I mean, U.S. involvement uh, is really at the right balance at the moment. Uh, that um, you know. Both promote the you know um, hard line, I mean promote the soft line in the government, mm -hmm. but also you know keep the leverage on by sustaining the sanction, so that you know bad guy, I mean spoilers, you know cannot you know uh, ruin the, I mean cannot uh, bring the you know change back. Otherwise, you know sanction will be you know imposed back. So that I mean it's this is a really delicate balance, but U.S. has been doing very well, I think. We have time for one last question, uh, right there. Hi, I'm Singmila. I'm a Naka from Northeast India, so I share border with Burma and India. And looking at the context back home, it has been a package that has been going on. And as we see the movie and the situations that are still in Burma, my question to you is the international community, if we have to really uh, reflect, we know that it has been very slow in terms of intervention. and all of us are looking forward to the future of Burma and we are hopeful, but we do know that those who are in power, they are from the military regime itself. So what if anything goes wrong? What do you think are the areas that the international community should improve upon so that the future of Burma is secure and safe? Well, many people say, you know, sanctions were not working, but you know, in, in reality, sanctions were working. You know, one reason was they were pushed too close to China, and they didn't want it, so that they wanted to come back um, to the you know middle. Uh, the second thing is that uh, they realized that you know, to improve uh, you know their economic situation, they need to get sanctions rid of, right? So that is the leverage that you know you don't really let go the sanction, but you just you know sustain it until you reach to the point a reversal. That's the point that we used in you know South Africa. Um, you know that could be the next you know uh, election. So. Um, if, if that next election is going to be free and fair, I'm very optimistic that Aung San Suu Kyi is likely to win again. Um, and um, yeah, that's the time that, you know, uh, right time, you know, a reversible time, if there's free and fair election, that you can let go the sanctions into the business environment. But at the moment, is sustaining is better than, you know, lifting the sanction at all. So um, the main point is, yeah, to keep the leverage. And also the um, former U.S. Special Envoy, now Ambassador Obama, is nominated. And it, I mean, he has been you know, dealing very well with you know, both sides, generals, yeah, and the you know, president office, and also also Suu Kyi. So that kind of you know, top-notch you know, U.S. diplomat will be really helpful for Obama. Plus, you know, we still need you know, pressure from all the activist groups you know, in the United States you know, to keep the sanction, to push the sanction, so that government can go you know, in the middle path, even though you know, they may not all agree to the uh, activists and they may not all agree to the government. You know, if you look at the Burmese government side, they don't like it. I mean, they don't want to get the sanction totally lift up. They thought it's too slow. And they were just uh, telling you know, that, well, you know, how like now come up, you know, because of, you know, we didn't get the sanction rid of after letting Aung San Suu Kyi win. 
uh, activists may say, well, you know, don't live the site and don't um, you know, even sustain the site and keep the site like it is now. But you know, it will be not quite smart in a way to you know, promote the you know, moderates in the government. So um, I think we need all pressure and engagement that the new government has been engaging, not just in Burma, all over the world. And you know, Burma is a good example of that in Australia working, actually. Thank you all very much, and thank you especially to iHearts for staying, and uh, hope we'll have a chance to talk about Burma again at a future event. <laughs>